Hey guys, for today's weekly video we have a really special treat for you. We're going to show the entire first video in the first lesson of our online Go Homestead course. That course can be found at thisishomesteady.com. The course is completely free. All you have to do is register for it and we'll tell you how at the end of today's video. So now enjoy the first lesson, what is a homesteader? On your mark, get set. Go Homestead. Welcome to the course. We're really excited that you want to start homesteading. And we want to help. Maybe you've already started homesteading a little bit. Maybe you have some chickens and some gardens. Maybe homesteading is totally new to you. That's okay. This course is designed to help you go from day one, maybe never having homestead or just a little taste, all the way to being totally comfortable with a yard full of goats, chickens, and whatever else you could imagine. Growing up, I had no experience homesteading. And in fact, it wasn't until about five years ago that I started with getting some chickens, getting into the world of animals, a little bit of hunting and fishing. And now I run a farm, I have a farm business, we sell meat products, and we provide a major amount of our own food right from here on our 10 acre homestead. You can do this too. You can go from very little experience to being very self-sufficient. All you have to do is take lots of little steps in the right direction. And this course is designed to help you do that. You go online, you search homesteading, you read through the forums, maybe you check a different, couple different websites out, and it can be intimidating. There's so many different opinions out there on what is the right way to do things, and what is a homesteader and what isn't. You can read on forums and get discouraged. You have people telling you, oh, this isn't right and this is wrong, and you can get so overwhelmed that you just say, forget it, I'm gonna go bowling. <laughs> But this course is designed to help you see that it can be easy to start homesteading and if you do it the right way, it can be a wonderful way of life for you and your family. Before you say, okay, I'm gonna start homesteading, I want you to ask yourself, do I have what it takes to be a homesteader? And to answer it, we really have to figure out what is a homesteader? So what is a homesteader anyway? I mean, it's 2016. We have smartphones, we have the World Wide Web. We have robots that'll vacuum our floor, Roomba. So how can you really be a homesteader? Isn't a homesteader somebody who traveled out west and provided themselves all their food? Well, to understand what a homesteader is today, we should look back and see what a homesteader was back in the late 1800s. It was around that time that the Homestead Act was passed. And this was a tool used by the US government to try to encourage families to pack up everything they owned and move out west to the frontier, where there was very little as far as settlement goes. They were trying to encourage a westward expansion. Now what would make someone take their whole family and all their belongings and leave the town that they grew up in, where everyone they knew was, where their family was, their support system, their job? Why would somebody do that? free land. The government announced that anybody who wanted to apply could have 160 acres all to themselves. If I told you you can have 160 acres, all you got to do is go out there and homestead, I might get you to pack up and leave home too. But now there was more to the Homestead Act than just free land. All the homesteaders who wanted to go out and take claim of 160 free acres, there was some work and some money involved. The first thing that a homesteader had to do was go to the local government office and file for one of these claims. And of course, as is usual, when we go into a government office and have to register or file, there's a fee. And that fee, by the end, would amount to around $60. Now I know, 160 acres for $60, that sounds like a steal. But remember, 
back in the late 1800s, a carpenter or a blacksmith, a working man, was probably only making about $10 a week take home. That wasn't factoring in all he had to spend on groceries, everything he had to spend on necessities for his family and as far as animals. So of that $10 a week, how long would it have taken them to save up $60? No doubt it would have taken some planning, it would have taken some penny pinching. A family had to be really motivated to put aside that kind of money. The good thing was, there was no limit to who could apply. Unmarried women could apply. Former slaves could apply. Farmers who didn't own their own land. All different sorts of people could apply for this and actually received this 160 acre plot. If they could pay for the application process, and then go out there and survive. This was the next requirement of the Homestead Act. Not only did you have to go out, head west, stake your claim, you had to stay there for five years. You had to be determined to stick it out. And you had to survive in a world with very little infrastructure, very little as far as community goes. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot that you could rely on when you got into trouble, other than your very close neighbors and maybe a trading post nearby. You can get a really fantastic idea of what these pioneers were up against if you watch the series Frontier House. The whole premise of the show is they take modern day people and they make them go back and do what people in the late 1800s were doing during this Homestead Act, this westward exp expansion. And you'll notice when you finish this lesson, you'll have access to that entire series. It's a PBS series. Uh, we'll include it here in the course so you can easily find it and go through it. It's your homework for this first week to start Frontier House. It's a six part series and maybe you'll want to take your time as you go through this course. But we really enjoyed Pioneer House. It was a big factor in what inspired us to get started in our own homesteading lifestyle. Uh, so enjoy it, watch Frontier House, and you'll get to see what these pioneers were up against. Imagine you save up the money, you go through the filing process, and now they've approved you. Now you have to pack up everything you own, all your family, all your animals, all your belongings, and you have to choose, what am I gonna keep and what am I going to leave? And you had to be really smart about this. You couldn't take big, heavy things that weren't really necessary. Remember, you're loading up in a wagon train and you're headed out west. So maybe you would have to let go to some cherished items. And yet, there are stories that tell of homesteaders who would burn down their house so they could collect the nails. Because out west, things like nails, metal hardware, that would be a rare commodity and it would be worth everything. So these homesteaders were willing to burn down their homes, leave their belongings behind, only pack up what was extremely necessary. Talk about simplifying their life. They then would load their family up and head out west. That would be a long, hard journey in itself. But when you arrived, there was no welcoming committee. You arrived to an empty claim. Perhaps there would be some buildings on it from someone previous, but more than likely, you would be starting from nothing. You'd have a bare open piece of earth that was all yours if you could last five years. That meant you had to get to work right away. Unpack your stuff and start building some kind of structure, a log home. And you had to build quick because winter was coming. And out west, winters were brutal. So not only did you have to unpack your, your belongings, you had to set up tents so you'd have somewhere to sleep. Then you'd have to start building a home. You'd have to start planting crops. You'd have to have your livestock cared for and out grazing and protected. And you'd have to get fuel for the winter, chop firewood so you'd be warm and you could cook. There was so much to do. These homesteaders had so much that they had to do, and they only had a few months before winter would set in. They had to work extremely hard, and then when winter arrived, they had to just hope that they had put up enough to survive. Sadly, not everyone did, but we do know that some made it that entire five years and they received the land as their own. They had to be determined. They had to have that stick-to-itiveness, give it all they got, 
It was hard, hard work, but there were rewards. The reward of owning your own 160 acres, which even today would be an incredible amount of land to have all to yourself. They did have to do an incredible amount of work themselves, but these homesteaders didn't have to do everything. It was quite a common practice for someone to go in, develop their land, bring in their livestock. But remember, you were traveling by wagon train. Maybe you didn't bring all your chickens or all your goats or your cow. You had to pick and choose what you were gonna do when you arrived. And then you had to focus on the most important tasks. But if you worked hard, maybe you had a bumper crop. Maybe you had a little bit extra corn at the end of the season. Or your chickens were laying more eggs than your family could harvest. And so what would you do? You could take that extra, you could bring it down to the local trading post. You could get some money for it, you could barter with it, trade with it. Homesteaders didn't have to be completely self-sufficient. And although the communities were small, and there wasn't a whole lot of people, they were close. In fact, within these western communities, people were more united. Race was less of an issue. Your former class was less of an issue. Everyone out west was just trying to survive. And so if you were a neighbor, you were welcome and you worked together. You didn't have to be 100% self-sufficient. So we can learn some amazing lessons from these homesteaders. Although our world is very different today, we have smartphones and we have GPS and we have cars that can drive us and planes that can fly us, we can still learn some incredible lessons and we can be homesteaders wherever we live today. There are three lessons that we learned from these homesteaders. The first lesson that we can learn from these homesteaders was that homesteading requires very careful planning. Those homesteaders had to go, they had to file, they had to have the amount of money they needed to file. That meant they had to plan every week to pinch those pennies so they could pay for that process. Then they had to pick and choose what they were going to take with them. Then when they arrived, they had to plan for that season. They had to put up firewood, they had to put up enough food, they had to have the right amount of animals. Planning is a major part of homesteading. Dive into homesteading too quickly, you may not succeed. And that's one of the areas we're gonna help you in this course, is to make sure that you make the right plans and that you don't just dive off the deep end, only wind up failing because you took on too much at once. The second lesson we can learn from those former homesteaders is that homesteading requires a simpler way of life. Remember the stories of the people burning their house down to collect the nails. They had to decide what was really important and what wasn't. When they were loading up those wagons to head west, they no doubt were leaving things behind because they were too big and bulky and not important enough, not necessities. If you're going to start homesteading, you're gonna have a lot more work to do. You're gonna have less time to do it. And all your extra money is going to be funneled into your homestead, whether it's to feed animals or buy seed or put up infrastructure. And so to do this, you're going to need to live a bit of a simpler life. Maybe eating out less, maybe buying new clothes less, doing a little bit of thrift shopping. When we started homesteading a few years back, we didn't have a load of extra money lying around, but we did pinch the pennies where it counted so that we could build up the infrastructure and slowly build our farm to the point where it could make some money and try to offset some of the cost. But don't be fooled, that's not going to happen quickly. You are not going to be earning lots of money. Year one, just like those homesteaders from times past, it's pure survival. The third great lesson that we can learn is that you don't have to be totally self-sufficient. Remember, those homesteaders, they would work in their communities, they would trade, they would barter. You don't have to raise all your fruits and all your vegetables and all your animals. You can decide what you like and get really good at it and then take that surplus and use that surplus to trade and to barter with other local farmers, other friends, even selling some of it and taking that money to get what you need. A homesteader is not someone who lives on 160 acres and is totally self-sufficient. It's the way that you look at the world. Are you a consumer or are you a producer? A homesteader looks at the world around them and sees how can I produce more food? How could I produce more fuel? Whether or not we're gonna sell everything and quit our jobs and head out west and burn our house down so we can't even turn around, 
that's not really what makes us a homesteader. It's whether or not we are willing to plan ahead, simplify our life, work hard towards our goal. And if we do, we can experience the same result that those homesteaders did back during the Homestead Act of the late 1800s. You see, if they could survive for five years, the land was theirs. Now, when those five years passed, the hard work didn't stop. They would work hard for the rest of their life, just scratching out an existence. Homesteading is hard work. It is hard, physical, time-demanding labor. But there are amazing rewards that you can't get anywhere else. The satisfaction of having your table full of meat that you grew yourself and vegetables that you grew yourself and looking around your beautiful property that's maintained with your own animals and your own gardens. There's nothing that feels as good as that. And so if you're ready to enjoy those results, then we better get started with this on your mark, get set, go homestead course. If you want to get into homesteading and you don't know where to start, we've developed a course that's perfect for you. You can find it at thisishomesteady.com. You can click this link and you'll be taken to the site where you can join our email list. And as soon as this course goes live, you will have access to it. It's a completely free course. It's brought to you by our friends at Grow Journey, the seed of the month club. They want you to start your own grow journey whether it be gardening in a raised bed or a giant garden out in your backyard. They have plans for both small and large gardens. So check out growjourney.com for your own free trial. Get a whole month of free organic seeds shipped to your door. It's also brought to you by Premier One. If you're going to have livestock or if you're going to start a garden, Premier One has the supplies, the fencing, the waterers, the feeders, everything you're gonna to need to take care of your animals and your gardens at your homestead. And it's all amazing quality. I've never seen equipment as built as nicely as the equipment from Premier One. So check them out at Premier, the number one, supplies.com, or just click on this link. We thank our partners for helping us to create this on your mark, get set, go homestead course. And we hope that you will now take the next few weeks to start and in just a couple weeks, we guarantee that you will be ready to go homestead. Hey, buddy boy. Daddy, we're filming the animals. Daddy, I'm surrounded by the stove. You are surrounded by the goats. Always sets an end to buy the chickens and you can find them at China's Point or even and get some and, or even buy some eggs from your favorite farm then hatch them in an incubator. You can buy some just lick on the one. And we have you know, you know, one from PA and one that we ha have on the ready. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you're interested in taking this course, just head on over to thisishomesteady.com. I want to show you, there's a big yellow button right here that says join us. Click on that button and it's going to take you to a sign up page for our email list. If you sign up for the email list, I'm going to send you a, some news about the course. Right now we're going through the course with our test pilots. There's 20 of them going through. But as soon as this course is ready, it's completely free. If you join the email list, you'll be able to get the entire course for free. It's an in-depth video course all about homesteading. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed this first lesson. Head on over to thisishomesteady.com, click on that yellow button, and then punch your name, your first name, your last name, and your email address. You'll be on our newsletter. And from there, you'll find out all the information as we release our Go Homestead course. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You'll be up to date on all the news from our Go Homestead course.